Troy has become a um, stock market analysis wizard of sorts. Um, and he's had a tremendous track record with uh, stock options, specifically leaps and even short term options as well. And mm -hmm. um, we haven't had one of these like actually breakdowns in a while. You've done it on tour a few times. Yeah. But a lot of people, the vast majority of people were not at one of our tour stops. Yeah. So what percentage? I'm going to cut you off for a shot, but what percentage did that cost them by not going to the show? For well, how much? Bucks, right? So that that's the thing, man. And, and I'm happy that uh, we uh, we're back in uh, the forefront of things to sort so, to speak. Hit the like button, please, and, and share. share with five this friends. Is free information. This could potentially change your life. No yep, cap, especially if you're listening and not complain. No cap, all facts. So we got we got preferences by saying Wednesday we're gonna have a full. You want you want you want to go there first? Let's go through the presentation yeah. first, and then we'll say it later. Because more of a, it's let more me, of a, let me orchestrate the yeah. show. No, no, because it's more of a of a preview type let, situation. Let me produce the show, and um. Oh, you and your Mike Bibby right now. Okay, I won't spoil it either. Yes. Oh man, so it, it's been a minute. I'll be honest with you. It's it's been a long while since we had an opportunity to sit back and really teach uh about trading, and about options trading to be specific. Uh, and so. We're going to give you a little preview uh, of how we're going to start moving forward, especially with EYL University, especially us at the forefront of it, um, because it's important, right? Like people can understand how to create a brokerage account. Some people have understood how to trade equities, and that's great. But most people, especially over the past five years, are trying to figure out how can we make money trading options, because that's where they see all the percentages. Um, and we have to say, and we have to preface it by saying trading has considerable risk. Considerable risk. risk. <laughs> yes. But trading options has even more so of a considerable risk. All right. And so we're going to pre preface it by some of the things that, you know, we're going to be talking about uh, over the next couple of weeks. So the first thing is what are options contracts? And it's very important that you understand the difference between the two, right? An options contract is really the oblig not the obligation right but the the right to right so you're not obligated to buy a con a share but you have the right to and so each contract is worth a hundred shares and so when people are talking about i want contracts i want contracts i want contracts that's really the equivalent of a hundred shares so if you see somebody with one contract that's equal to 100 if you see somebody buying two contracts they have the right to buy 200 shares now mm -hmm. that doesn't mean you have to right? and we'll break down that even further when we talk about exercising, but I want people just to understand that, all right? First thing you gotta realize is that it's really a, a predictable type situation, right? So when you're talking about options, you're talking about the predictability of a stock moving north, right? Appreciating or moving south, depreciation. Depreciating, and when we're talking about moving north, we're talking about a call, right? And so if I make a call, I'm making a prediction saying that the stock equity is going to move upwards or it's going to move downwards, which would be a put. And so most times you see people saying that they made this money and if they had a call, so you see the word call in front of it, that means they said that the, the equity was going to move up a certain amount uh, during a specific time. And a put would just mean the opposite, right? So if the equity moves down in that specific time, money is going to be made or lost. Now, there's a couple of things inside of there that you have to figure out, and that's the strike price. And so the strike price could be anywhere in the range of 10 to a hundred dollars of the actual uh equity right so if we take a company like apple and Ian, you you spoke very well uh very well about it <laughs> it's trading it's at 175 dollars well if i ask you do you think in the next two years apple can raise its price target to 180 dollars most people would probably say yes oh if yeah you, that's if a you home agree run. yes put yes in that's chat. a home run yeah that's a home run that's a home run right yeah it, yeah even 205 is a home run Right, so that would be a call, right? And there's a there's a premium that comes with that. So you have the you're buying that number in the event that it goes up, you make money. Now, if you're a pessimist and you think that Apple won't do that in that frame time frame, right? Then you would make a put. And if that number goes down, then there's also money that can be made. And there's a premium that's get paid. So most people don't realize this is how it works, right? When I'd say $175 is what Apple, the actual equity costs. That's not what you're paying when you're buying an options contract. You're actually looking at the bid and the ask, right? And so when you think of bid and ask, I want you to think of like when you're going to buy a car, 
The bid is what the dealer is going to tell you the car costs, right? The the ask is what the dealer is going to tell you what the, the car costs. The bid is what you're willing to pay. And yeah, so it's you it, negotiating the price. It's a negotiation process. So these margins are where the, the, the brokerages make a lot of money. And most people have no idea how they make the money. But this is it, right? So if, if I wanted to buy the contract and it was a $180 strike price and it cost me $2, they're going to say, all right, I'm going to charge you. I'm going to charge you uh, two seventy five for it, and so that margin is where they're going to make their money. Now it's not two seventy five; actually, it's going to be moved. You're going to have to actually move a decimal point across, so it really becomes a two hundred seventy five dollar per contract situation. And so you which have to know the steal, which is a steal, right? Right. These are hypothetical numbers, right? So before we do anything, we need to know all the parameters of that, right? And on top of that, we're going to have to figure out how to find contracts that make sense because some of them are overvalued right if i so if you looked at nvidia contracts right now you probably say to yourself all right these are too expensive for me this is too expensive. i can't afford this i can't and they probably are right because nvidia as you see has trended north for the past six months it hit an all-time high today it's trending toward a thousand dollars which is incredible um and so it becomes a higher premium based on the trend of the actual equity. So we're going to figure out how to use undervalued contracts. And there's, there's a very unique system that we, we use to figure that out so that we always have the wind built in anytime we buy into contracts. And then the last piece of what I've been doing with trading options is I've been using AI. And it's probably been one of the, the same way that you hear Shadi talk about using AI in terms of media and Ian using it in, in terms of media. I'm I'm also using it, I think it is, bro. I'm using it in terms of trading. And so one of the things I found is like, look, there are plenty of experts that are analysts and they get paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to do their job. I said, that's great. All I need to do is find out where they're reporting, take their report PDF and have my good friends over at AI or chat GBT or any of the, the ones that can actually decode PDFs and tell them to summarize it. I prompt them to exactly what I want. At some points I'll say, Hey, give me a expedited uh, target price for the next six months. And it'll do that. If I do that over six, seven experts, now I have a great consensus. You have a good rate median strike. Yep. I can figure out what they're thinking based on the research that I'm doing. And now that gives me a, a nice target to find out where I'm going to put my strike price. Right. So all these things are, are what we're doing to evaluate how we're going to trade our options. Right. Because it's, it's a delicate process. It is a sensitive process, but it could be a very mm -hmm. rewarding process. And when we do that, we get results. Now, I'm not one, and you know this, and y'all probably know this, I'm not one to gallivant and talk about results. But if we're gonna show results, I figured this is family, this is Market Mondays, my earners at hand, let's, let, let's, let's go through the scoreboard of some of these results. Because not only are we talking about trading equities and trading options and telling you, hey, these are the things that we're looking at, and now we're actually implementing these things and winning. Before, before you show them the results, so, which is, okay. Great, um, great production moment, Rashad. Go ahead. Tell them, explain the AI play just like you did in Chicago. All right. So, or, here, or should it be kept for university? No, no, no. Just no, no. Trust me. Okay. This, All right. This is valuable. I love y'all. I love y'all. <laughs> I love y'all so, so much, man. I love y'all so, so much. Here's how this is going to work. And I kind of just broke it down a little bit, but I'll give you that specifics. All right. So, I look at a company like HubSpot, I look at a chart, I look at its trend. I'm looking for the support and resistance over the past year. I'm looking at support and resistance over the last six months. I'm starting to see trends. I see it in Salesforce. I see it in uh, CrowdStrike. I'm starting to see that there was a rise during the pandemic. There was a great pullback. It's almost like a perfect mountain, and we're starting to see it climb again. So, all right, let me let me start figuring out how we can make take this advantage of this. And so, I, I look inside of HubSpot. I look at where the, all the experts are. Figure out where the institutional money is going versus the retail money. And that's important because I want to know where institutional investors are putting their money because that's where I want to put mine, right? So if I see 80% of the equities owned by institutions, BlackRock, Vanguard, you can, I mean, a number of institutions, I'm all right. This is something that they're invested in, especially in tech. I need to be behind that. I take their expert opinions. I download the PDFs. Now, these PDFs are 15 to 20 pages. Now, if you have the time to read it, great. Feel free. We got to maximize our time. And I think that's one of the best things, benefits of having AI is that you can actually maximize time. So mm -hmm. download the PDF, 
put it in Anthropic, which is a great AI tool. Claude 2 is, is, is their version of ChatGPT. Prompt it. Hey, I need you to summarize this. Give me the strike. Give me the price target. Uh, and give me the uh, guidance, the forward guidance for the next year. Put it in. Hit return on it. Within 10 seconds, I've got an entire page layout of everything I just asked for. I'm like, all right, that's pretty cool. Let me go find another expert. Prompt the same thing. And now I'm creating my own database from those experts who actually spend hours, have more tools, have more resources, have a bigger network. Now I'm just compiling all the information it's that like, they like have. Option yeah. cheat sheet. And now I'm just creating my own formula to figure this thing out. I'm like, well, well, this is how AI really should be used. Let's maximize our time. Let's become more efficient. And so I'm saying to myself, perfect. This is exactly what I'm going to do. And so we did this in Chicago. It was like the, really yep. the first test. And I, before I even presented it, I spoke to Ian about it. I'm like, have you ever heard anything like this? And he's like, no, but I should have thought of it. <laughs> I wish I would have thought of it. I'm not going to lie. And so I told him, I said, yo, I'm going to go for it tonight. I'm doing it with this company, HubSpot. Let's see how it goes. Um, and from that moment, we did that show October Fantastic. 22nd in Chicago. Yep. HubSpot was trading at 410. And I think when I closed out the position, I actually put it in a slide in one of my results. I think it closed out at 590, 590. Mm -hmm. So we're talking, I mean, and that's just percentage on the equity. So the, the actual option, I think I closed out at maybe 300, 400%, something crazy like that. But that was just using technology, using the research, using knowledge that I already had, right? Because we always talk about AI can make you, it's not going to make you smarter, but it can enhance intelligence. And this is one of those things, like I already had the, the actual knowledge base to do trading, but now I'm like even more enhanced because now I'm even more efficient because the information plus network is, is, is much more vast. Okay. How was that? That was good. Thank you. Appreciate you. All Amazing. right. So let, let's show this results. And right, let's do some results, man. Mike, where you at? You got me, Mike? You know, we're not just talking we go. about it. He doing yeah, it. yeah. I mean, we're not just talking about it. So when we talk about Microsoft and we're talking about all the things that they're doing with AI, I mean, we, these are calls that we're putting in. And so when we talk about leaps, that means we're going from a year to two years out. And so this call, I probably put in maybe June of last year. But you can yeah. start starting to see some of those returns. So 276. Now, most people are going to say, well, how much money did you make? And my thing is like, I'm, I'm never one to, to tell you about the money because the money is great, right? And of course we're going to make money and that's what we're doing this for. But the percentages are, are more important to me because we all start at zero. When I don't have a call, when I don't have a contract, we all start at zero, right? We may not start at the same amount that we're investing and that's fine. I don't want to discourage anybody. You should use what you have to invest, right? I don't want you putting the entire life savings, life savings into trying and trade options. No. I want you. You should never put more than ten percent, please, of your portfolio on please, options. Absolutely, please. that's yep. my personal. That's please. my personal rule. Right, ninety yep. percent long term, ten percent options. And, and and that's it's extremely important. So the percentages are so much more important to me because again, everybody starts at zero percent, and what you do and when you do it is important will determine how your account's going to look anyway. So this is one of our first ones. Microsoft, we're into twenty twenty five. We already. Where's Microsoft trading at? Ian, you got your thing. You got right your. Now. Yeah, yep. so uh, Microsoft is at four fourteen. Four fourteen. So we're we're way past the, the strike price. This this call is probably going to go up. I mean, at the rate that the market is moving by next year, I can see yeah. this going up to four fifty eight. Yeah. yeah, Mike, keep going. Yeah. Actually, I got it, Mike. I got it. Oh, you skipped mine. Right. We here. I we talked about Lily all the time. Lily. Yeah, we're gonna go into this a little bit more. An another one looked at the research, saw the earnings was coming, and I'll, I'll show you a site that we're using. Um, to figure out wh how the earnings are being projected. Another one, we saw Lily was uh, trading a little bit under 675. So I took a, a little bit of it again. Well, this was a pricier call, but look, look at the returns. And this is something that we've done within the last month. Let's, let's just keep rolling. I'm gonna keep rolling. Yeah, yeah let's try. Let's go, let's go. So yeah. SMH, we talk about semis all the time, right? We love semis, love semis, love semis. Why are we not investing in ETFs? Why are we not investing in ETFs option calls? Here's a perfect example, 100%. Now, most people are saying, oh my gosh, well, it's only it's only 100%. Yeah, but where else are you getting 100% in less than four months, less than two months, all right? So let's keep rolling, let's keep rolling. Uh, we told you about Cloudflare. <laughs> Spelled it out for you. You did. Um, we did, we did, we did another one. Um, and this is more of a short-term option call. Now. At the end of the year, when we asked what were our companies for the year, 
specifically said TSM is the one I'm looking at. It's one of my yeah. favorites because I know the infrastructure and how much is needed in the and when we're talking about technology, right? If we're talking about semis and we're talking about NVIDIA, who was the number one provider for TSM? All companies run through them. They make 70% of the world's uh, semi chips. Of course, I have to have a call on them. But I want you to make a quick distinction, right? Because not only do we have calls in them, we own the stock. You see, like that NVIDIA, there's no call there. Yep. There's no call. There's no expiration date. That is the stock. So yep. I own the stocks of these companies. And so what is the strategy? I own the stock and then I own the we'll options trade, on the yeah, stock. We'll trade the same and we've one. been telling you for five years, I want you to get a hundred. I want you to get a hundred. Why? Because when you get a hundred, now you can actually sell calls. And so a hundred has always been the number. And so this NVIDIA, my stocks, probably I think in this brokerage account here, I think I got 400 shares. Those 400 shares are up 300%. 300% the shares, all right? And that came from this call. Why? NVIDIA hit a 175 at the time. And Ian, you were on the call with me. This was yep. January of 2020. Of last year, right? Of last year. Yep. I told people that I'm getting into this call. This I is never the next will. call that I am doing. This is the next one, y'all. And there was some positive feedback, and then there was some feedback that wasn't the so boys positive. Said it cost too much. <laughs> what did it cost you not being it now? But everyone else, you see how we able to get 3,000 percent return in a year? This is and execute. That's why I said percentage is so so important. That's not twelve hundred dollars, ladies and gentlemen. That is twelve hundred percent. So that's why I said it doesn't matter where I started at because we're not going to be starting at the same positions. That's fine, but. If you put a hundred dollars in, if you put a thousand dollars in, that's twelve hundred percent on that call, right? So these are the things we're talking about. All right, so owning the stock and owning uh, options on it as well. But once I saw this, I said, "Wait, I can't just stop at the two hundred five call. We got to get more calls." You so could I could stop, <laughs> but it would be it wouldn't be wise. <laughs> it wouldn't be wise. So why why stop? Let's let's partake in all of it. Let's go to the twenty five call for four fifty five. Well. NVIDIA is running up to 825. So that go call is going to keep running, right? When the June one expires, this one will keep running. But why stop there? Let's keep going, right? And so now I'm in the 26 call for 800. That's already up 74%. So you can start yeah. to see we're compounding and we're compounding and we're compounding. Why? Because I see the trend. I'm watching it. I'm watching my shares go up. I know I can sell. These are all the things that you're putting in, 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 inside of your mind frame when you're starting to see these yeah. wins. It's important to see them. But it's just not NVIDIA. I still got some of these other ones that I can't let go that I just believe in the company. And so, yeah, I'm, I am in DraftKings. And these are some of the more recent ones that I've I probably done. Obviously, you know, DraftKings is something that we've talked about probably since the inception of the show. Yes, yeah, since but the beginning of the show. It, it, it's still Prince for me. It's still Prince for me. And then this is one we spoke about last week that I probably, I just did maybe, I might have did this on Tuesday, right before your party, I think. Salesforce, man. <laughs> Salesforce, right? If I, I saw what was happening to HubSpot inside of the CRM space, we, we understand they have great leadership. Uh, we saw them have a great pullback. Uh, they they obviously let people go. We talked about the acquisitions in Slack and how that affected the company. I like Salesforce going long term. And so I'm like, all right, well, perfect. This is an opportunity mm -hmm. to, to grab them and, and, and have a call on it. And so why not? All right. So the, the, the real question is, you know, I think you posed it already. What would it cost you to not be involved? To not do it. So, and if we can talk about triangle offense, Rashad calls QQQ. I'll tell you to trade NASDAQ future. What, what would you be up long on QQQ calls? Easy 50%. Like if you. Oh, well, they deaded him. They took Ian out. So, <laughs> so, um, so yeah. Blackout. So that was the options situations, but this isn't an option program. We just wanted to. Do it, but, but but the announcement is that so EY University, like I said, we we're back hands on. I've been teaching a financial planning class every single um, month, but Troy will start teaching a monthly options master class for EY University every month. Every month he's been at it. You know, he's, he used to be a teacher, so he's coming back into the classroom and he's teaching. And the first class is this Wednesday at eight o'clock. Yes, and it's forty eight hours. Only forty eight hours enrollment. So if you want to, if you want the full hour of him. Now we're going to log in now. EYLUniversity.com. 
it's a 48 hour enrollment and then we just go and debt it for the rest of the month. We want less people in this time around. We, we got some different ideas. We, we've learned some things. And the biggest thing is to be more hands on. So, um, yeah, every month, Troy is going to be doing his options masterclass. So we want to kind of give you a, a taste of that. And, um, yeah, if you want the whole version, sure. EYO University. Now we're getting busy. I'm be honest with you. We're we going to get busy. It's been a while. Um, and I started looking back in, in the files. I'm like, damn, it has been a while. So it's going to be a while. It's been a while. Everything that I just told y'all, I'm actually going to show y'all in real time. I'm going to have y'all involved in it. Plus, I'm going to tell y'all what we're looking forward to next. 